Thanks for everyone for coming along today. Um, that today I'm pleased to announce that Tom Lynch and Stephen May have been appointed co-captains of the Gold Coast Suns. Uh, the process has been since Gary um, spoke to me in his end of season review at the end of August uh, that he wanted to relinquish uh, the captaincy of the Suns. So since that time we've been heavily in process and talking to different people and, and stakeholders within the club, which included match committee, some players who were part of the leadership group and other players as well, probably about eight or ten, um, CEO and football manager. Um, I spoke to Stephen and Tom at the end of the season, so we had a, probably a couple of weeks before we spoke to them. Um, and then and then the due process, we've appointed them. Uh, obviously, we've spent a lot of time over the last couple of years, I think, identifying and developing our leadership. Um, now, now, it was one area that we certainly identified early, um, but now we needed to have a greater breadth and depth of leadership within the club. Over the last two years that Stephen and Tom have really stood out. I think that really came to the fore last year when Gary injured his shoulder and Michael Ricciatelli in the same game. Um, so the last seven games, these two were co-captains um, for, the, for the last seven games. And the characteristics that we're looking for in leaders really stood out. Uh, the players really respected their way they went about it. Uh, they're, they're leading by example. Um, I, think, I think they're demanding standards uh, for their teammates, um, so um, obviously that it would become a reasonably easy decision that those two were actually going to be co-captains uh, for 2017. Um, uh, looking forward, uh, there's certainly an exciting, exciting period for us as a club in 2017 with a new TNA facility, $22 million that we're going to move into, nine new players and now two new captains. Um, it's certainly an exciting period for the, for the Gold Coast Suns. Um, I'd like to, I suppose, congratulate these two and, and for everyone here to congratulate these two as, as co-captains and I'm open the floor up for questions. Robert, was there some sort of voting process or was it just sort of pretty obvious that there was no No, there's no voting process. Um, no, there was heavy discussion amongst match committee, um, Marcus Ashcroft and Andrew Travis as CEO and head of football. Um, we spoke heavily then, you know, discussed the pros and cons and if there's anybody else was in the frame. but. Uh, uh, that was certainly evident uh, that, that these two gentlemen stood out. Um, then we canvassed a few players as well. Um, we, we're not the belief as a club, and I'm not the belief either, that the players vote on captain. Um, I think it's really a club decision because you want a team captain, but you want club captain as well. So there's a whole range of uh, whole range of areas that you need to have, have to take into account before you appoint a club uh, before you appoint a club captain. Um, obviously. Uh, that, that the board through Tony Cochran was involved in that as well and, and, and they got ratified the, by the board earlier this week. You said a couple of days ago you weren't sold on the co-captaincy. I did. You uh, you, us a dummy or no, no, you didn't pick that up, Michael. I thought you might have picked that up, that I said that I've never been... Uh, uh, I suppose... I suppose positive about... Uh, or a fan of co-captains, but I didn't finish it. I didn't put the butt in there. So... <laughs> Um, I just left that open-ended. But, uh, yeah, I, I, I think historically I haven't been uh, a fan of it, but, uh, I mean, Sydney do it very well, and they've, they've had co-captains for a long period of time, GWS, um, su successful with it. And I think it's horses for courses, and I think, you know, now these two are, were standouts. Um, I think they've got a lot to learn. I think, gonna have, you know, they're going to have a lot of support from their teammates, um, and I think they'll complement each other. Oh, I think early days, probably my coaching and probably the way you know, you're brought up, you think old school a bit and you don't sort of challenge the boundaries of that. Um, but, but I think, as I said, it's horses for courses. It might, in turn, I mean, five years' time, ten years' time, there's one. Um, but I think, I think for us at the moment and for these two guys, I think, I think it's the best fit. And, I've, and, I'm, and I'm certainly positive they'll do a great, you know, do a great job. But did you ever try to push for just one captain? No, not at all. No, not at all. No, I think we canvassed all, all opinions and all ideas. Um, but it was a standout that these two were the ones in front. You said they complement each other really well. Could you elaborate on that a little bit? Oh, I think they, you know, they're different personalities, even though they're both... I think the, uh, the things that stand out, that they're, that they're the same, they're both very competitive and they're both demanding. Uh, but they've got different, person, you know, different personalities in the way they go about it, uh, different empathetic uh, roles as well. So I think... Uh, and I think you know, it's a big job to be a captain of a footy club. And there's a lot more demands on it than there's ever been. Um, you know, media, functions, 
club, you know, club things that have to do. So I think, I think to be able to share that, we'll be able to take uh, some sort of pressure off them. Uh, one and the other thing that they're both they've got that they both play extremely well, um, and obviously can be demanded at both ends of the ground. No, well, he spoke, he brought it up. Yeah, and you were talking to these guys beforehand, so that... No, no, I didn't say that. Oh, before. Didn't. No, 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 no. Okay, so this is all fresh. Because Gary right? was before the last game, and, away, and they still had a game to play, and it was a week later. So it's new to these guys too? It's not just new to media? About them taking on... They knew in September. They knew in September? No, no, they didn't know the final. No, they knew this week, but we'd spoken to them about, about the possibility and what they thought about in September. Yeah, no, that's all right. I was like, maybe they knew way earlier, and you've just... Rocco, we see, we see what they do out on the field there. Can you give us a bit of an insight into the role these guys play behind the scenes in, in the shift with the boys? Well, I think the I think the, the one outstanding thing is, is the respect they've got of their teammates. So when they speak, you know, the players listen. Um, they've got a great ability to not only, I suppose, demand uh, standards um, and actually challenge their teammates, but they've got good empathy. So they're all about trying to influence their teammates to greater heights. Um, and, and that's really stood out. Um, uh, so I, I think, you now they've, you know, they've still got some areas to learn and refine, and, and they've put their hand up about that, uh, but I think, you now the basics of what we what we want as a, as a leader, that you now they've got in spades. We've seen um, big key position players, you know, Reebok's a good example, thrive with the leadership. Do you, what do you think it can do for their game? So I guess they seem to, to lift with the, the extra load and the responsibility. Yeah, I, yeah, I don't think it's going to have a negative impact, and I think... I, Sometimes it's a trick, as you imagine, as a captain, that if you get the title, some people uh, will worry about the title and what they need to do and actually go out of the realms of what they're capable of um, or will actually get the basics right, which is play well. Um, I think these guys will play well. I mean, they're, you know, they're good players. You know, they demand highly of themselves, um, firstly, um, and, and I'm sure that won't affect them in a negative way and I'm, I'm very hopeful it'll be a positive effect on them. Do you see them, I guess, these, these guys are the leaders for the next decade, mate? I make him 36. So I don't know if that'll be 35. I don't know if he'll be playing at 35. <laughs> um, yeah, certainly, the next five or six years. Yeah, there's no doubt that takes them into their 30s. But uh, footy's a funny game, they tell me. So anything can happen. Tom, what does it mean to you? I mean, you've both been here since the start. So you've both been here since the start, Tom. But for you, what does it mean after sort of six years of doing the club? Yeah, obviously it's a huge honour to um, captain the footy club and Steve and I won't be taking it lightly at all. Um, obviously Gary stepped down, he's been fantastic for us and I know we'll have to lean on him at certain stages and he's going to give us a lot of advice so about the ins and outs. So, but yeah, we're definitely humbled and um, very honoured to be captain of this footy club. And sharing with Steve, can you give, give us an insight into what sort of lead you think Steve will be and how he'll assist you in the role? Yeah, I think the last seven games, um, Steve and I shared it obviously in I think we worked really well together, opposite ends of the ground, and Steve's obviously very um, competitive and hates losing and very demanding. Um, but he's also gets around the boys, makes sure they're okay, and he's got that empathy as well. So he'll be super for us, and I think we'll lean on each other, support each other, because obviously it's a massive job ahead. Um, Steve and I will get help, support by the boys and leadership group. But I'm, um, yeah, really looking forward to being co captains with Maisie. Did you notice any differences in those final seven weeks? whether it was responsibility or did you feel any extra pressure? Well, it seemed to show in your play, but did that give you a bit of insight into what you expect full-time now? Yeah, obviously it'd be a little bit different being full-time now. Gaz was well captain on-field, obviously, because he wasn't there and he was still captain off-field. So, um, But we spoke to Rocker before. Um, we were co-captain at the end of last year and he said, just play your natural game. And um, as he said before, don't go out of the realms of what you can, can and can't do. So I think, um, yeah, it was a good experience towards the end of last year and um, hopefully grow from that. Tom, having Gary on the field on you boys as a captain, do you expect him to be looking over your shoulder or how, you, how, you, how will you approach that? Oh, I think it will be great having Gaz on the field. He, he'll um, Obviously he'll be in the midfield, so he'll be driving the boys in the midfield and I'll be up forward and maybe down back. I think it's going to be great for um have a former captain out there with us and to support us and help us through things. and. Um, also the week to week, so yeah, I can't wait to um, get Gaz back out there, he hasn't played much and yeah, we're very much looking forward to that. Rob mentioned you guys have different empathetic roles, is there a case of kind of good cop, bad cop with you guys? <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Uh, no, I don't think so much. I think um, one of us might get a bit angry at some things. We might settle each other down. So I think we'll, um, we'll just lean on each other and be good support for us. So I think we'll um, work well together. Stevie, I guess take us through, I guess, how you see your role and then um, what do you think Tommy can bring as well? Just wait for this. Yeah, um, last year when, you know, once once uh, Tom and I took over um, the last seven games, you know, it, it was sort of just thrown upon us because we didn't expect Gaz to get injured. Um, and he, he was back playing his best footy and in, in in leading by example, which is what he's really good at. Um, but after doing that, I suppose we grew, grew a little bit of confidence out of that. And um, after our review at the end of the year, um, and Rocket brought it up with Tom and myself, and we had a chat, um, we just think, you know, that, that we're ready for it. And um, having Gaz, like as Tom just touched on, still around and help us with the transition, um, it's, it's great. Because if he were to retire or to leave, um, we wouldn't have that, that captain around. So, and his, um, his endorsement and the words he said to us in the last you know, week or so um, has really given us a lot of confidence and, he, and he's here to help us. And he's, he's been a super leader while he's been here and he's probably been um, judged really harshly be, because his best asset is his ability to turn football games and he hasn't been out on the track. So, um, you know, I, back to your question about um, what I see in Tom. Tom is, we're similar in, in some respects and, you know, we're demanding and we're very direct and um, we like to think we get things done straight away. Um, and um, with the empathy, what Rocker was probably talking about is, um, you know, the way we follow up and stuff. We, care, we generally care about our teammates and we care about this football club and um, so to have this role um, you know, in front of us and, and we've been given the, the privilege to take it on. You know, it's, it's incredibly humbling for both of us and um, I couldn't think of a better bloke to share the role with. Um, you know, f six years ago we were living together, you know, tr doing pre-season, trying to, trying to get a game. He wouldn't have thought uh, we'd be captaining the club six years later. So it has been a whirlwind um, and we've got a lot to learn and there's no doubt about that. But I think, um, back to my point about Gaz being around still, he's, he's going to really help us through it. Um, at the moment, he he hasn't really touched on anything too too deep. Um, you know, it's an exciting time for the club and for ourselves. So he's letting us enjoy it. Um, I'm, sh you know, he, he did touch on that the pressure and those sort of things. They're in season, pre-season. There's, there's not so much around um, how the captains are going, and we understand that because when we took the role um, towards the end of the year last year, even though the coaches and in the playing group didn't put pressure on ourselves, Tom and I, you know, have high standards of ourselves, and we're able to. You know, lift with the pressure, I, I suppose. Um, but now, being full time, it's a it's a full time job, and um, you know, it's something we're really relishing. Steve, can you tell us a bit about your sort of journey with, when it comes to leadership? Because early days, probably from the outside, it didn't look like that was a role for you. But in the last two or three years, you seem to have progressed and developed quite rapidly. Was there something that happened, or was it a maturity thing, or how did you sort of put yourself in this point? No, that's a great question. A lot of the coaches that we've had here from the start. Um, you know, they're making some comments today about how far I've come from when I first got here. I was trying to get a game. I wasn't professional. Uh, I wasn't mature. And I think um, Dean Solomon, you know, maybe in my second or third year, really pulled me aside and, and um, you know, got me to pull my head in a bit with my training standards. And he was very harsh. He was my defensive coach. And he told me I'd have a spot on the team for 10 years if, if I'm willing to do the work. And I think once Rocket came on board, I, um, I ga he, I helped, he helped me mature. Um, and he came in with... Um, Full of respect for me, and um, you know, so I, you know, I had high standards of myself because of how he saw me. So um, that's really how it happened. And so it has come quick in the last two or three years. But um, I suppose I took a bit longer than Tom to click and understand it's professional and you know how you go about things. And you know, everyone's different, but um, we both made our way here now. No one's perfect, but there'll be no more mid-season holidays for you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're they're never planned. Um, you know, I don't go out with that mindset. But um, last year I wasn't captain, and you know when I went out, I you know it hurt the team. So no doubt that it's going to have a bigger impact. Um, I've I've already been working on that stuff, and um, the second half of last year I came back and, was, and I showed that I can do that without um, going across the line. So that bit's taken care of. Steve, you seem to be coming into your focus, but Steve particularly seems to be coming into your peak as a footballer. Do you feel like that? Do you feel like there's a lot of room to still improve? Yeah, I think um, towards the end of last season, um, I started playing better football and I didn't want the season to end because I was playing better as each week went on. Um, fortunately, the season was over and now we're back into pre-season, which is everyone's favourite. But, um, you know, 
oh, I'm looking forward to this year ahead and with the new role I feel like the, my, footy, my best footy's ahead and also Tom. Tom Tom had a super year but we know that he has a lot of improvement so that's exciting for the football club Oh, it's um, you know it's an honour, and um, to represent Indigenous people in such a high role, um, you know, it, it gives me goosebumps thinking about it because it's not something you, you see a lot of, um, and it's something as an Indigenous community and Indigenous footballers we're trying to drive that, and we and we want to have more Indigenous leaders throughout the game and throughout society, not just AFL. So um, yeah, I'm I'm all for it, and um, I'm very proud. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Well done, guys. Great to have you well done, Stephen. That's ready. Very diplomatic, like a politician. <laughs> <laughs>